What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News. And I want to give you guys, finally, if I can get through this video, because it's April and pollen is out at large. So if you hear sniffling and all this, I apologize in advance because I hate this part of the year. Claritin, Zyrtex, all that stuff doesn't work most of the time. So anyway, <clears throat> I will be battling this outside interference. So bear with me. Um, but I finally want to get to the fight study between Anthony Joshua and Jarrell Miller. Okay. Um, a complete breakdown of these fighters. You have Anthony Joshua being 29 years of age. He's uh, He's got 22 fights, uh, 21 by knockout. He has an 84-inch reach. Um, he's 6'6 uh, six, six in height. Uh, let's see. Jarrell Miller is about 6'4". 24 fights, uh, 23 wins. He has a draw, but he has 20 by KO. You know? Um... <laughs> He has 89 rounds, you know, so he has more rounds in than um, Anthony Joshua. And he is 6'4", so, you know, only two height, two inch height difference, but it looks a lot bigger than that if you look at pictures between the two. But not, like, not massively. You know, he's definitely taller than someone like Prevectin, so, you know, um, it won't be that much of a height difference. Um, but the reach... You know, is 89, 89 to 84. Well, uh, I think the height has a lot to do with that too. You know, Anthony Joshua has learned how to use his height when putting up his combinations. As before, he used to, you know, try to emulate Mike Tyson. <clears throat> and he had to break from that because he was going to actually, somebody was going to get hurt or he was going to get himself hurt fighting someone shorter, you know, as... As Alexander Povetkin on that, right? Um, when I look at this fight here, I look at um, the dynamics, the styles. You know, Joshua has a a fully focused textbook style, where Jarrell Miller has somewhat of a busy, like plotting style almost, but he's a busy plotter. You know. Jarrell Miller's like a dude, he reminds you, he comes forward with a jab, you know, but he dips because he likes to uh, slip punches a lot. A lot of times, honestly, he ends up taking a lot of those shots. And, you know, his last fight was like that. He took, I think he took way too many fight punches. But that probably is because of the fighter. Now, another thing that bothers me about Jarrell Miller, you know, one of the disadvantages uh, that he has is his head movement. He doesn't really have good head movement. Um, he just really puts up his mitts and blocks if he sees the on oncoming traffic coming his way, right? So if he sees the punches coming his way, he just kind of really put up and move forward, you know? So almost he puts his, 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 two, hand, his two forearms up like a shield. Now the problem with that, it ain't a shield, okay? You can go around the guard. You can go through the guard. And someone like Anthony Joshua with the straight right, I see that is a no-brainer. But there is an advantage that Jarrell Miller has. Jarrell Miller does have stamina, okay, his work rate. You know, that's why um, it's difficult for Joshua to get sparring for someone like Jarrell Miller because there's no one that actively fights like that to this day, okay, so he's going to have to deal with the pressure of Jarrell Miller. And the thing is, can he pace himself? Will Jarrell Miller pace or allow him to pace himself during those fights? And I don't think he will because he doesn't respect him. You know, when you lose respect for a fighter, you know, take, for example, um, Marcos El Chino Madonna, right? When he took on Floyd Mayweather, right? Well, first and second, but definitely the first. He, did, he wasn't afraid of him, and he didn't respect him. So the things Floyd was normally able to do, he couldn't do in the Maidana fight because Maidana simply wouldn't let him. He wouldn't let him reset. He got pounced right back on him and made that fight a rough, drug-out fight. And he won about four or five of those rounds, actually. I would give it 7-5, you know, me just thinking back and looking back at that fight. 
but he didn't respect him. I think the same rules will apply for Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller does not like Anthony Joshua, and likewise for Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua has went out, you know, and done things that I have never seen him do. You didn't see that with Vlad or Takam or Parker. You know what I mean? Now, you know, he's mentioned Parker has talked smack, but it's never been to the point where Anthony Joshua said something back and replied the way he replied. Okay, so, you know, I feel that Joshua is um, is buying into all the, the, the shit talk. Let's see how that affects his fighting ability. You know, and you have someone mild-mannered like that and you piss him off, that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. Okay? If it's someone like Sugar Shane Mosley, because I remember when Fernando Vargas pissed off Sugar Shane and said, you know, you have a woman working for you, which was his wife, for Christ's sake. You know, and you, you, you're you following a woman instead of the other way around. Sugar Shane did not appreciate that. And as a result, Sugar Shane beat the brakes off of Fernando Vargas. And he didn't do it once. He did it twice. I think he took more punishment in that fight, <clears throat> in those two fights alone. I don't, uh, you know, uh, Trinidad, I know that really cracked the, the egg open for Vargas. But I think, you know, uh, Sugar Shane really split it. You know what I'm saying? So that could be an example of when you piss off a fighter, you know, but an example where you piss off a fighter and he underachieves or he's not focused like Trinidad was with Bernard Hopkins. OK, well, that could be in Hopkins favor because Hopkins purposely did that because he wanted Trinidad mad. He wanted Trinidad not focused. He wanted him focused on something else. So if Joshua was focused on rearranging and uh, 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 <clears throat> being a surgeon on his face, I think he needs to worry about the whole package and what's coming at him also. So, you know, that's what makes this fight so tricky. Along with not getting sparring, you got a unique fighter versus a fighter that's already pissed you off. And, you know, Jarrell Miller is going to do this anyway. You know what I mean? He talks smack coming out of the wound. He's from Brooklyn, okay? That's what they do up there. He explained it like, hey, we talk about your mother all day. Your mother, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? So they do that type of stuff that way. But Anthony Joshua doesn't like it. So we'll see on the day, will that affect his fighting ability? So if he tries to go in there and pull a Vladimir Klitschko, I'm going to take you out in the fifth round kind of thing. And Jarrell Miller's still there. Even if Jarrell Miller goes down, which I don't even think Jarrell Miller has ever been down. You know, so as of now, he has a proven chin, you know, so that's another equation. OK, can Miller take the punching power from Joshua? Now, we would know we would say that coming on moving forward. We would have to ask that question. Could Joshua hurt Jarrell Miller and make Jarrell Miller respect him? Because that's the only way that he's going to do that now. Because Jarrell Miller does not respect Anthony Joshua. Okay? He doesn't respect Anthony Joshua. He's made it known that he doesn't. He's everything from diva to uh, a playboy model to pussy to coward to a lot of other derogatory slangs. Okay? He, he has a whole book full. The Anthony Joshua Slander Book by Jarrell Miller. <laughs> he has them. So... <clears throat> That's the only way that he's going to get respect from Jarrell Miller is he hits Jarrell Miller with something massive and he has to do it often because even if he hits Jarrell Miller and he hurts him, I don't think Jarrell Miller then would just be like, oh, I'm going to back off. No, he's going to move forward and continue his game plan and apply, and apply his own punching power. And I see Jarrell Miller. This is how I see this fight going out. I see Jarrell Miller working behind the jab, you know, putting up his quote unquote shield for defense, not really using head movement, taking punishment to get in, you know, and trying to work the body of Joshua to take steam out. You know, I think this is an investment. I think that Jarrell Miller, their game plan is to work the body, work the body, take off steam, you know, um, withstand the storm that's coming from Anthony Joshua because they have to expect one, you know, you call pussy, slut, diva, you say that enough to someone, you know he's coming in full force on the first half. 
So I believe Jarrell Miller's camp is banking on Anthony Joshua to come out and get a knockout. Okay? I think that's what they're doing. That, that you know, when they do that, you know, it's funny how Joshua says you don't want to give 100% to the first day of training. Well, if he gives 100% to the first uh, segment of that fight, the first half, he might be in trouble because there might not be anything left in the second half. And Jarrell Miller is banking on that. Okay? So they want to take whatever Joshua has and they're looking to stop Joshua late. Joshua wants to knock him out early. Those are the intentions of both fighters. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Joshua wants to make a statement in New York. He's, he's basically going to sell out Madison Square Garden. More than likely, these guys will. And he, you know, he has a lot of pressure riding on him. You know what I mean? Because this fight is not the only fight that we're looking at, but this is the fight ahead of us. So the fight ahead of us is just in, more intriguing because we want to see if he gets past this fight. So it's a lot of pressure on Anthony Joshua. Jarrell Miller, not really. He's made, what, $8, 9000000 million to fight Anthony Joshua, right? You know, he's uh, he, his, he's set as of now. All he has to do, all he has to really do is go out there and do the best that he can do. And if the best that he can do, along with the slander names and, you know, and the mind games, it might be enough. So we will have to see on that day, you know, but... If I was a betting man, I would bet on Joshua because I don't think that Jarrell Miller has been in there with that type of punching power. You know, and it is not just one hand, not just the right. It's the left hook. It's the right uppercut. It's the straight right. You know, it's the jab that does start affecting you to set up all those other punches. So I do think that Anthony Joshua will, um, will take... Jarrell Miller out, but I don't think it'll be fourth round or fifth round. I think it'll be more like seven or eight, maybe nine. You know, that's what I would bet on. If I was a betting guy, I would bet in the ninth round, Jarrell Miller will be stopped. But again, Jarrell Miller could put a pull up in that upset because if he goes in there applying that body work and he's able to, um, you know, apply his game plan by working the body and taking the steam out of Anthony Joshua, you know, and ripping shots to that body. You know what I mean? I think that he will give Anthony Joshua enough concern with, you know, with covering his body. Then he can open himself up upstairs because if you're coming in, you know, and Jarrell Miller's dipping with the jab, then coming in with the left, right and the left, you know, to the body, you know, if he keeps doing that, in, you know, consistently, consistently impressing Joshua, that would be one hell of a fight, okay? And then that would give Joshua worry. It would give him concern, like, this dude's going to my body, you know? And a couple of those body punches hurt, so I need to cover my body. As soon as he starts covering his body, bang, bang, right upstairs, two-piece, uppercut, you know what I mean? Things of that nature. Now I'm worried about, okay, now this guy's in full attack mode. He's doing a combination of throwing not only to my body, but upstairs to my head. So, you know, the fight could, it's an interesting fight. And I do think, you know, uh, Jarrell Miller is tough. I don't, I don't think a couple punches will put this guy away. You know, his frame, his mass. I don't think a couple put like punches from Joshua will put this guy away. And if it does, I'll be very, very impressed with Joshua. You know what I mean? I think Joshua has a tough fight from an undefeated fighter. I honestly do. And it might be a fight of the year kind of situation. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, but the advantage for Joshua, textbook, fundamentals, gold Olympic champion, great jab. Um, he throws beautiful combinations. And I think Joshua won't try to, in the next half of the fight, if it goes to that, if it gets to that point, I don't think that he'll be putting his punches together to actually put full force on them. A lot of times you can do that in fights and that wears you out. I think he's going to be working on combinations, you know, and, and just putting them together to score points on Jarrell Miller because they know Jarrell Miller's in for the long haul at that point. So they have to train for it, right? They have to be ready. So, but Jarrell Miller, his biggest problem is his defense with me. It's not his punching power because his record shows, hey, 23 wins, one one draw um, with 20 by knockout. You know, I think he does have punching power. It's just not like devastating. You know what I'm saying? 
but he does have enough punching power to get anyone's attention. But anyway, that's just me wrapping up the fight study, guys. You guys tell me what you think about Anthony Joshua versus Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Of course, please subscribe. You guys been counterpunched. Peace.